In this problem, we need to solve for x using row operation on augmented matrices. And here is our system of three linear equations in three variables. And before we write the augmented matrix, we need to make sure all our equations are organized. We need x's, y's, z's, equals, and constants. Do we have that in each case? Yes. So it is ready to write the augmented matrix. So we're going to take our first equation and strip off the coefficients. So I'm going to get 5, negative 2, 6. Then I'm going to put my vertical line and my constant on the other side. So I have 5, negative 2, 6. Those are my coefficient and my constant is 0. Next equation, 1, negative 1, 3, and 3. And our last equation, negative 4, 2, negative 1, and 13. So now we have our first augmented matrix. And the way we're going to solve this system is we want to get it in row echelon form. That means I need a 1 at the top of column 1, zeros below it. Go down the diagonal, a 1 on the diagonal, 0 below it. Go down the diagonal, 1 on the diagonal. So that is what my goal is. 1's on the diagonal, zeros below it. So let's look at our matrix. I don't have a 1 in this position. Now I could divide this whole row by 5, but I can see fractions appearing right here. Is there a way to avoid that? Yes, because this row starts with a 1. So if I just interchange these two rows, then I will get my 1 at the top of column 1. So the row operation is row 1 interchange with row 2. So my row 1 is now going to be my old row 2. So it's going to be 1, negative 1, 3, and 3. Row 2 is going to be my old row 1. And lastly, row 3 stays the same. So now I have completed my first objective, that is to get a 1 at the top of the first column. Now step 2 is I need to get a 0 below it. And the way we get zeros is we multiply the thing we made a 1 by the opposite of whatever this number is. So what's the opposite of 5? Negative 5. So I am going to take negative 5 times my first row, and I'm going to add it to my second row and put the answer in my second row. So let's do some scratch work, negative 5 times row 1. So I'm going to take negative 5 and multiply it by my first row. Negative 5 times 1, negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And lastly, negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And now all I'm going to do is write row 2 underneath it. So row 2 is 5, negative 2, 6, and 0. And then I'm just going to add these two rows up. Did I get a 0 in my first position? Yes. So now I just add these numbers. 5 minus 2 is 3. Negative 15 plus 6 is negative 9. And negative 15 plus 0 is negative 15. So now I need to write my new matrix. 
I think I'll write it over here. Row one I'm happy with because I have the one at the top left position. So there's my row one, the same as it was before. And this make this here, this row, sorry, is my new row two. So I'm going to have zero, three, negative nine, and negative fifteen. So now I have my zero below the one. So now what's the next step? I need to get a zero below that. So we're going to do it exactly the same way. We're going to multiply this one by the opposite of negative four. And what's the opposite of negative four? I think it's positive four. So we're going to multiply four times this whole row here. So let me write my scratch work here. I'm going to take four times row one plus row three, and we're going to put it in row three. So what is four times row one? Four times one is four. Four times negative one is negative four. Four times three is twelve. And lastly, 4 times 3 is 12. And then we're going to write row 3 below it, which was negative 4 to negative 1 and 13. And we're going to add them up. 4 minus 4, did that give us the 0 we wanted? Yes. Now, what is negative 4 plus 2? Negative 2. What is 12 minus 1? 11. And lastly, what's 12 plus 13? 25. So that is now my new row 3. 0, negative 2, 11, and 25. So I was running out of room. I just copied the last matrix we found. And remember, we had 1 and 2 zeros below it. So I've taken care of everything in the first column. And now we need to go down the diagonal. I need a 1 in this position. That means I need a 1 here. Well, luckily in this case, if I look, every element in this row is divisible by 3. So if I divide this whole row by 3, I won't get fractions. However, if that had given me fractions, I'd look to see if this whole row were multiples of 2, and if they were, then I could have divided this whole row by negative 2 and switched row 2 and 3. So all I'm going to do in this case is divide every element of row 2 by 3. So if you want to see what the instructions would look like, it would just say row 2, divide it by 3, put it into row 2. So I'm going to write my matrix. Row 1 stays the same. What is row 2? 0 divided by 3 is 0. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. And finally, negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. That is my new row 2. And now all I have to do is write my old row 3. So now I think you can see I have my 1 on the diagonal. So what do I have to do next? Next, get a 0 below it. And we're going to do it exactly the same way we did before. We're going to use the thing you made a 1, the 1 on the diagonal, and multiply it by the opposite of this number. What's the opposite of negative 2? Positive 2. So I'm going to have... 2 times that row. So I'm going to have 2 times, whoops, 2 times row 2 plus row 3. And I'm going to put my answer in row 3. So what's my new matrix going to look like? 
Row 1 stays the same. Row 2 stays the same. And now all we have to do is figure out what happens with row 3. So 2 times row 2. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Whoops. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And then we're just going to write row 3 underneath it without any changes. 0, negative 2, 11, and 25. And then we're going to add them up. I still need a 0 in this position. Do I have it? Yes. Did I make the zero I wanted? 2 minus 2 is 0. So now I have 11 minus 6 is 5, and negative 10 plus 25 is 15. So that is my new row 3, 0, 0, 5, and 15. So we have our zero here, so the last thing we need to do is go down the diagonal and get a one here. That means I need to get a one here, and the only way to do that on the bottom row is to divide every element by this number. So I'm going to divide every element of row three by five. And so what is my last matrix? 1, negative 1, 3, and 3. 0, 1, negative 3, negative 5. And 0 divided by 5 is 0. 0 divided by 5 is 0. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So it's 0, 0, 1. And lastly, five, 15, sorry, divided by 5 is 3. So now we have our matrix in row echelon form. 1 on the diagonals, zeros below it. So now we're going to find x, y, and z by back substitution. That so what we need to do is write our matrix now as equations. So row 1 is 1x minus y plus 3z equals 3. So x minus y plus 3z equals 3. Row 2 is no x's, 1y minus 3z equals negative 5. So I have y minus 3z equals negative 5. And row 3 says no x's, no y's, 1z equals 3. So I already know that z equals 3. And what back substitution means is I take the value for z that I found and put it in the equation above it. So I'm going to get y minus 3 times z is 3 equals negative 5. So I have y minus 9 equals negative 5. Add 9 to both sides, y equals 4. I now know what y is. Now what I'm going to do is take that z value I know and the y value and plug it back into the first equation. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get x minus what's y, 4. Because remember, I'm putting it up here, x minus y plus 3 times z, plus 3 times z is 3, equals 3. So now x minus 4 plus 9 equals 3. x plus 5, I'm running out of room, equals 3. So what does x equal? x equals negative 2. If I had to write the answer as an ordered triple, I'd write it as the x value first, negative 2, then the y, 4, and then finally the z value of 3. 
But this original problem was multiple choice, and if you go back and look at the first slide, you'll see that x equals negative 2 was choice B.